In this presentation, we will render the pharaoh's sarcophagus, which we created earlier in the previous presentation. This will highlight the many features in Form Z Render Zone to create surface style textures, apply lighting, and also composite the pharaoh within a background museum type environment. Let's get started. You can create your own surface style texture in Form Z by just double clicking on the surface style and modifying color, reflection, transparency, and bump. You can also go into the predefines. Lightworks has many different libraries you can install, or you can use some of the predefined materials that come with Form Z when you install it. For example, the hammered gold. We can use it as is or modify any of the parameters and apply it to our object. You can also use a bitmap pixel image. Any standard image format works, and that becomes your surface style texture. And that can be applied to the object. And you can also use that as a bump shader effect. So you can use the intensity of the grayscale part of the image to create a bump effect. And then you can also use the color part of the image to actually create the color of the surface. You can also go in and uh, create your own shaders if you want. Uh, Formsy has an open architecture. You can go in and use uh, the actual scripting language or C compiled plugins to add to the existing functionality of Formsy. This fabric shader is a plugin that comes with the program, but you can create your own shaders if you wish. Now let's move towards the center portion of the Pharaoh's sarcophagus. Here's the wireframe view. We'll go in Interactive Shaded OpenGL. We'll apply a server style texture of some Egyptian artwork. And with the default projection mapping, you can see it's just sort of projected on the surface. It's not really mapped onto it. And that's not a problem because we go to the Texture Map tool and choose Parametric Mapping. So you can see that it mathematically follows the true shape of the object. So if I were to edit the object, notice that the server style texture is parametrically mapped and snaps right onto the surface of that geometry. Let's apply a different server style texture. How about this uh, stone texture? And instead of interactive shaded OpenGL, let's use render zone. Give it a 3D bump effect. You can apply many different server style textures to the same object using the decal tool. Let's apply this server style texture of this Egyptian hunter. And this image map is then mapped on top of the existing texture. Just give it a size give it a position, and move it anywhere that you want. Let's move it towards the top here. And you can see it's placed on top of the other texture. Let's add a second one. Let's use this Egyptian artwork server style texture. We'll parametrically map it on the object, give it the size that we want, and once again maybe switch to a top view here and just sort of slide that and graphically position that wherever we want on the object. You can not only mix and match the different surface style textures, but you can also mix and match each different internal shader effect for each texture. For example, the second decal, let's turn off the color, use just the bump information only, and now you can see that the second decal is being used as a bump shader only. Now as we move towards the crook and the flail, you can see that uh, we can take this blue and gold server style texture and when we apply it to these objects, the parametric mapping will, of course, automatically follow the true direction of that geometry. Let's use the gold for the sphere and for the flail. And if you watch the modeling portion of this, these are all clones. So if I were to modify any of the rendering attributes, for example, highlight that one part of just one of the flails and apply a red color to that, you can see that all three of the flails update because of the cloning process. So let's highlight that part of the flail, up make that green, and they all update. Now let's take our geometry and superimpose it into a background image. One way to do that is to just load a underlay image and then using any of the zoom tools we can uh, perspectively match our view parameters in with the background image. There's even a perspective match tool. Just align the lines of the perspective rectangle with the fall off lines of the background image and you can perspectively match it that way. There's also a Kona vision mode which allows you to graphically modify the camera parameters for eye points that are of interest and you can also type in numbers for the uh, eye point position and the camera parameters such as focal length and camera angle. Now once we have that perspective view set up then we can create some additional geometry by using the background surface style shader. So I can create a floor uh, and it's going to take on the color of the background image and we can create some walls and then from here instead of the wireframe view 
let's move to Interactive Shaded OpenGL. So I can actually save that perspective view and move away into more of a bird's eye view uh, of our scene. Now we can work with some lighting, maybe add a sun light source, and you can see you can dynamically move these light sources in the scene. Now here's the sun, and we can move that dynamically, or we can also edit the parameters by typing in numeric information. We can give it an exact position. There's also a database in Form Z which allows you to choose any city in any part of the world and give it a certain time, and it'll automatically position that sunlight for you. And you can also animate the light source. Now there's a variety of different light sources that you can choose from. Since this is inside of a museum, let's turn the sun off and just add some interior lights. Maybe a point light. Uh, we can create a cone light. And there's many more different light sources that we can add to the scene. And you can see that you can graphically and dynamically move these or type in numeric information for these different light sources. Now we can work in the bird's eye view or we can go back to that perspective view. And you can see we can interactively uh, in OpenGL mode uh, look at the lighting conditions in that scene. Now once we have all of our lighting set up we can go back to um, our wireframe view and do a render zone rendering. So we can do a full ray trace rendering of the scene with the background image and we get a rendering that looks like this. And notice that we are picking up reflections and shadows of our geometry that are sort of superimposed into the background image. Now we can add some extra effects too. For example, depth blur. So it looks like a photographic image. We can add some blur into the foreground and into the background and it still has the depth information uh, even though it's a 2D pixel image. So we can control where that blur starts and stops. We can also add some lens flares. You can see that uh, the sample luminance value in Lux is recorded when you render the scene based on the lighting conditions. And so you can actually generate lens flares based on hotspots on surfaces or direct exposure to a light source. And those are just added on top of or superimposed into the current rendering.